Discord, a program that has quite frankly become the de facto messaging client, especially in more sort of technical and geeky communities. But a lot of people these days, myself included, have for various reasons grown to dislike Discord. Yet many people also struggle to find a replacement for Discord. So in this video, I'm going to go over my top open source replacements to Discord right now on Linux Lounge. Now, for my first open source Discord alternative, we have a program that's so simple your grandparents could use it realistically. It's really that easy to use. And that's where it excels. Telegram is easy to install. It has an official app for all of your devices developed by Telegram themselves, whether they be mobile or desktop. And there's even several unofficial clients for more obscure operating systems. For example, there's Teleports on Ubuntu Touch. All you need to do to get going is put in your phone number and away you go. Telegram has a nice UI out of the box. Even though it doesn't necessarily integrate well with desktops, it is fairly customizable and clean. Uh, as well as that, Telegram supports all the features you could possibly want. It has private chats and calls, one-to-one -one chats and calls, as well as group chats, much like Discord. Uh, group chats are only text only though, but there are several groups you can join, as well as having a lot of features that actually rival programs like Discord. Telegram has a lot of really cool features in its own right. The main standout for me is stickers. You can swap them, share them, make your own, they're really cool. And you don't need to pay extra to use them uh, either, unlike uh, Discord Nitro with custom emojis. Additionally, you can add people by their username or phone number, so it should be really easy to connect with your contacts on Telegram if that's your sort of thing. If not, just don't let Telegram access your contacts. Uh, as well as all of its features, Telegram uh, actually has a pretty large user base. There are lots of different groups to join, and I've even seen people out and about using Telegram already. In fact, it's what I personally use to communicate with friends, because most of them were using it already. However, Telegram is not without its downsides. And in the case of Telegram, the downsides really relate to your privacy and personal freedoms, and whether or not Telegram actually does what it says it does. For example, there are concerns that Telegram doesn't properly encrypt messages, making them easily readable by Telegram. However, this is kind of just some speculation that some people have. Additionally, though Telegram is open source, they often take a while to publish the source code for new versions of Telegram as they come out. However, with all that said, I would still highly recommend Telegram as a completely drop-in replacement for Discord for people that really just want something that's simple and easy to use. And now we're getting into slightly nerdier territory, but it's still fairly easy and usable. What's good about Raya is it strikes a balance between usability, freedom, and privacy. I also think it's the most Discord-esque in the way that it works, but before we talk about that sort of thing, let's first discuss what Raya is. Well, it's a secure chat client that works using the Matrix protocol making it highly standard and decentralized, which a lot of people will greatly enjoy. It has official apps for pretty much all of your devices and can even be run in a web browser. Additionally, there's quite a lot of um, other nice third-party apps, and to top it all off, it's totally open source through and through. Uh, additionally, Riot's UI is pretty nice, although it's not necessarily as polished as, say, Telegram. Uh, another cool thing about Riot is that you can use it far more anonymously than, uh, say, Telegram, for example. It doesn't need a phone number to sign up, it doesn't need an email to sign up, and now for, uh, you know, kind of what features Telegram, or Riot rather, has... Sadly, unlike Telegram, it doesn't have the ability to make calls, but the texting experience is 
pretty good and supports everything you could ever want, such as sending photos, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, additionally, Riot supports encrypted chats from person to person, and unlike Telegram, there's no worries about Riot being able to access these chats. They're all yours. Additionally, much like Discord, Riot has groups. Except, unlike Discord, they're actually very easy to find. You can easily search for them directly inside the application and find a group that interests you. Uh, there's quite a large user base on Riot, um, depending on which server you go onto, and that's always nice. Uh, now, as for the downsides to Riot, well, sometimes it can be a little bit finicky, especially with encryption. However, as a whole, it's pretty good and I've had no major issues with it using it across devices. Well, now we're getting into really sort of quite technical territory. However, don't let that scare you off. XMPP is pretty easy to use once you get everything set up. Now, essentially what XMPP is, is it's a totally decentralized messaging standard. You can sign up on one instance and message any other. It's pretty neat and there are lots of different clients you can use with it. Uh, personally, um, I use uh, a instance called 404.city and for my client I use a Linux client called Dino. Uh, as a whole, XMPP is pretty solid and much like uh, Riot, it supports your text chats and that sort of thing, uh, but sadly it doesn't have calling either, but you know the features it does have are very solid. Uh, there's support for one-on-one -on -one chats, like you know your private messages or groups. Um, it supports really robust end-to-end -end encryption. However, with some clients you do have to enable that by default, but that does mean the owners of the instances can't see what's being said. And you know, all in all, XMPP can be a pretty solid experience. However, in my experience, it's been fairly finicky, especially if you want to use it across devices with encryption. And just using it across devices generally, I guess. Additionally, there's kind of a serious shortage of good XMPP clients, in my opinion. Dino is pretty good, and it's the best I can find, but it's sadly not packaged for all Linux distributions. But if your heart is set on having a really private, decentralized Discord alternative, then XMPP is probably for you. Well, now let's talk about a service that you can use for voice chats, much like Discord. Mumble is one of those programs that does exactly what it says on the tin. It's a voice chat program and it's totally open source. It's really easy to set up and go. You don't even need an account or anything, just download it on your PC and away you go. It's incredibly easy to use and you can be on a server in minutes. However, that's where things tend to fall down a bit. Mumble's user base really isn't that large. And if you want your own server, you're going to need to host it yourself. But beyond that, Mumble is a nice, clean and fairly simple program and I have no complaints with it. If you can find a group that uses it or start your own, fantastic. It's a great program and it replaces Discord very nicely. Well, this last one is for people who enjoy old school tech. Now, true IRC doesn't support a lot of the technologies that Discord and other programs do. And there's a reason why these programs overtook IRC. However, for text-only chat, IRC is still a very robust and open protocol with lots of open source clients available. And although the user base, you know, really isn't there anymore as much as it used to be, you can still find, you know, servers with people who frequent them. There's still a fairly good user base, so if you're into your old school tech, IRC may just be the Discord alternative for you. Well, that's it for my list of Discord alternatives. Hopefully you found one in my list that you like. My advice would be to try a few of them and see which you like best and start getting it stuck into the communities that all these programs offer and start connecting with various different people who use these services. And uh, I think that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.